Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters. In today's video, we're looking at five more modern decks that completely disappeared. And by disappearing, I mean you just don't see them anymore. They are literally 0% of the metagame. Well, not exactly 0 since I was able to find the list. They are between 0 and 0.2% of the metagame in the last year in modern. And it's crazy because some of these decks were considered tier 1 or tier 2 for the longest time in modern. We're going to start with Golgari... What? <laughs> Golgari Rock, not Gorg Golgari Yorian. I don't know what's been going on with Goldfish lately. The names have been really bad. I don't know who does the naming for the decks, but come on, Golgari Yorian? <laughs> Plays Gigantha. How could it be a Yorion deck? And it's Golgari. You can't even cast Yorion. Anyways, this deck is essentially the fairest deck you could possibly imagine. It plays uh, this. This list plays Elvish Reclaimer, Dark Confidant, and Tarmogoyf, which are pretty fair creatures. They don't do much. By the way, just look at this. Dark Confidant is now much more expensive than Tarmogoyf. Fifty-five bucks for full play set of Goyf. So under fifteen dollars a Goyf is just a bargain. Back in the day, that wouldn't get that would not even get you half of a Tarmogoyf when I started playing. Uh, but the spells are Blood Chiefs, Thirst, Fatal Push, Inquisition of Kozlek, Thoughtseize, and Wither Bloom Command, which is a relatively new addition. Artifacts, you have Mishra's Bobble, Bag of Holding, Nile Spellbomb, Shadow Spear, Springleaf Drum, which are all targets for Urza Saga, uh, third chapter. The lands are just regular black and green lands. And the sideboard of this list, there's Bajuka Bog, Enter the Explosives, Haywire Your Might, Bithing Needles, Soul Guide Lantern, Bitter Blossom, Go for the Throat, and Torak Dead Cantor. So why is Golgari Yorion uh, not in the metagame anymore? I think it's because the power level of Modern has increased so dramatically in the past couple of years with the two Modern Ryzen sets. And this deck didn't get uh, much in terms of upgrades. Sure, it got the Witherbloom Commands, it got the Four Urza Saga, but it didn't get much compared to other decks like Is It Murktide, which got Dragon's Race Chandler, Murktide Regent, Counterspell, Ragavan, Archmage's Charm, Unholy Heat, Force of Negation, Fury, <laughs> Subtlety, so many powerful cards, whereas this got a couple of decent additions that didn't really change the strategy much. So when you compare the power level of the format, this stack is way too fair. It does nothing that's specifically intriguing or that makes some matchups lopsided. This is a typical deck where all your matchups have a 50% win rate when it's well positioned. But right now it's terribly positioned and the power level is just so low that you don't really have matchups that are easy wins. And that's not where you want to be in modern because it's a pretty variance heavy format where matchups are pretty lopsided. So let me know what, why do you think this deck fell off and also for all the other decks. And also if you have other decks that fell off so hard that I completely forgot about them. Now let's get to number four, which is Death and Taxes. We say Death and Taxes. Was this ever a deck in Modern? The answer is yes. Around four or five years ago, this was one of the most played decks in Modern. <laughs> but now it completely disappeared. It's played a lot more in Legacy than in Modern. And now the Mono White uh, Stoneforge deck well, back then, Stoneforge was not legal, but the mono-white kind of aggressive deck is just mono-white ham hammer. But this deck is just way too slow and similar to The Rock or um, Golgari Yorian. This deck just, well, it got a lot of new additions, but the power level and the fairness of this deck compared to everything else going on in Modern is just not there. But what did I do? But this deck, okay, it's cool. Uh, you see, Goldfish is doing some weird stuff recently. Anyways, there are tons of new upgrades in this deck. You have the three Esper Sentinels, the three Giver of Runes, uh, Cathar Commando, Stoneforge Mystic, which was unbanned a couple years ago, Thalia Garden of Thraven, which has been there for the longest time, Archon of Emiria, Extraction Specialist, Flicker Wisp, Skyclave Apparition, Sarah, Paragon, and Four Solitude. So essentially, all the creatures in this deck are new additions from the past two, three years except Flicker, Wisp, and Thalia. So you can't say this deck completely disappeared because it didn't get any upgrades. I think it just disappeared because the strategy as a whole is just not well suited for the modern format. 
especially with decks like creativity nowadays where how are you going to interact with archon of cruelty in this deck i have no idea <laughs> spells you have two ephemerate one emeria skull and artifacts you have aether vial pithing needle soul guide lantern sword of fire and ice batter skull and one caldra complete so it has a great package this deck is really good um if you're looking strictly at a creature based deck uh that's completely fair this is probably uh one of the best things you could play in modern but the problem is fury is in the top five most played cards in the format and you cannot beat a fury with this deck it's literally impossible all of your creatures have one toughness so it just wipes down everything and how are you going to beat a 3-3 with double strike or if the opponent has an undying evil a 4-4 with double strike it's going to be really hard Lands, you have Castle Art and Veil, Cave of the Frost Dragon, Eganjo Castle, Eganjo Seed of the Empire for another Eganjo, one Flag Stones, four Ghost Quarters, six Planes, three Silent Clearing, and three Urza Saga. Cyber of this list has two Burnton Forge Tender, two Path to Exile, one Shadow Spear, two Containment Priest, one Dranit Magistrate, two Kataki, four Rest in Peace, and one Sanct Fire and Vec. So I can't say I missed Death and Taxes, but it's definitely a deck that used to be everywhere in modern uh years ago but now it's just too fair for the format now let's get to number three which is a deck that might surprise you because it's again a deck that got quite a few upgrades and <clears throat> you see similar decks popping up like golgari yogmoth or other variants of the yogmoth deck but the devoted devastation decks which used to be in the top five top three most played decks in modern that was back when I was playing, I first started playing Gift Storm around 2017. This deck was really popular uh, when um, Vizier of Remedies was printed in Amon Ket. Yeah, 2017. It does an infinite combo with Devoted Druid. So you tap the, the Druid to make one green. And then you put a minus one, minus one counter on it to untap it. But when you have Vizier of Remedies in play, um, you don't actually put the counter on it you the cost is put a minus one minus one counter on it but what vizier says is when you put a minus one minus one counter on it you remove that minus one minus one counter so essentially you can activate it an infinite amount of times and then we, you, you would use finally of devastation to get um well they used to play a creature that um <coughs> who are you gonna get with this well, i guess they only play two copies now but you can play eladamry skull to get walking ballista and deal infinite damage to the opponent uh, but back then they also had a creature did they have? No, I think you just play the Finale of Devastation for a bunch, and then all your creatures get plus X plus X and haste until end of turn, so it's like attack for infinite damage with haste, so you're probably just going to win with that. Um, you could just get other Devoted Druid, whatever. Uh, new Planeswalkers, you have Tyvar, Jubilant, Brawler, uh, which if I can read correctly, because it seems like his arm is above the text. It's one generic, one black, and one green for a three loyalty Planeswalker. We activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. That's pretty massive because it allows you to combo off on the turn you play the druid. And one of the this deck's biggest challenge was to make a druid survive. Normally you would play the druid on turn two and pray the opponent didn't have a removal spell. And if they did not have one and did not have a counter spell, you would probably win on the next turn by playing a vizier and then going infinite. Plus one is on top up to one target creature. Minus two is mill three cards, then you may return a creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Spells you have two Tyvars stand. Target creature control gets plus X plus X, gains hexproof and destructible until end of turn. So it's great at protecting your druid or your vizier. And at the same time, you can sink mana into it when you have infinite mana with the combo. Elder Armor Skull, great at assembling the combo and also getting your walking ballista, which is the best win condition when you have infinite mana because you just kill the opponent. <clears throat> Other new additions, you have Giver of Runes, which was recently added to it, and also Stoneforge that got unbanned a couple of years ago. Uh, artifacts, Chromatic Star, Lux Luxior Gada's Gift, Viridian Longbow, and Caldra Complete, which are targets for the Stoneforge. And in the lands, you have also Baseju, uh, you have Urza Saga, which could also get the equipments, and the rest is just basic abs and stuff. Cyborg, you have Gemstone Cavern, Stormout Script, Haywire Might. Pithing Needle, Prismatic Ending, Veil of Summer, Sanctifier Invect, Endurance, Force of Vigor, and Orvar. So, why does this deck fall off? I think it's similar to Death and Taxes. Fury is just everywhere, and it's hard to have a creature-based deck nowadays when Fury is like the third most played card in the format. You see, people try to play this deck, but look at the results. They're terrible. 
<laughs> look at their results. Well, two five and O's, but the rest are just terrible. Terrible, terrible. So I do not recommend you play this deck right now in modern. And also now with Unholy Heat, Fatal Push, Prismatic Ending, Portable Hole, Solitude. There's just way too much removal. And some of it some of it uh, requires no mana, so it's really hard to deal with it. That's why I think Devoted Devastation fell off. Let me know what do you think. And now let's get to number two on the list. Which is a pretty similar deck that's Kiki Corridor, as MTG Goldfish calls it, Naya Combo, I guess. The combo was Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, 5 mana 2 2 haste, tap, put a token that's a copy of target, non legendary creature control on the battlefield. And that token has haste, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. And you would do this along with Restoration Angel, 3 generic and 1 white, 3 4 flash flying angel. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-angel creature control, then return that card onto the battlefield under your control. So you would target the Kikijiki, a copy of, um, not a copy, but Kikijiki would come back, and it has haste, it would be untapped, so you could tap it again to make another copy of Restoration, Restoration Angel. It will trigger again, blinking the Kikijiki once again, so you would do that infinitely, make an infinite amount of Restoration Angels that all have haste due to Kikijiki's ability, and you would just attack the opponent. The rest of the deck is essentially a fair value-based creature deck. And that's exactly the problem with this deck. Because, okay, maybe in 2015, a combo on turn 4 of Restoration Angel and Kiki Jiki was enough to win the game. But now a turn 4 kill is just way too slow. You have decks in modern now that win on turn 1. <laughs> so how is this going to be fast enough? Especially since you don't really have any interaction in this deck. Can just block with your creatures, but you don't have prison elements, you don't have counter spells or discard spells. It's pretty good at grinding, especially now with Ren and Six and other new creatures. Um, but overall, it's just too slow. It's kind of reliant on the graveyard with cards like Eternal Witness and Ren and Six. It's just not that great. Creatures you have Birds of Paradise, Charming Prince, Scavenging Ooze, Wall of Roots. Eidolon of Rhetoric, Endurance, Eternal Witness, Knight of Autumn, Renegade, Rallier, Sanctum, Prelate, Hero of Bladehold, Restoration Angel, Kikijiki, Two Solitude. Spells you have two Path to Exile, one Prismatic Ending, one Finale of Devastation, four Court of Calling. And Lands you have pretty much a four color, uh, not four color, Naya based mana base. So this deck's just, it hasn't changed much honestly, which is pretty shocking. With all the new printings, especially the good, cheap creatures. But I guess you could still play Wall of Roots and Knight of Autumn and Renegade Rallyer. <laughs> There's a reason why this deck is not played anymore. It's just too slow. It's too clunky. It's not fast. It's not interactive. Just it feels so underpowered. Like, oh, I'm going to go play a 4 mana 3 4 and then a 5 mana 2 2. And those cards will hopefully combo together. Well, now in modern we have subtlety, we have solitude, unholy heat, fatal push. So many cards that deal with the combo for zero or one mana that it's just not feasible anymore. Right, in the sideboard you have quite a good toolbox like uh, Collector Roof, Gaddock Teague, Lavinia, Friction Revoker, Sanctifier and Vex, Spellskite, Magus of the Moons, Calculative Apparition, Friction Vindicator. Shalai, Thrun, Elish Norn, and Sun Titan. So all creatures that you can get with Finale or Court of Calling, which makes this quite a versatile sideboard, but is versatility enough when the deck is just bad? <laughs> That's the real question. Speaking of bad decks, let's get into the number one of this list, which, by the way, it was in no particular order except the number one. And this is the one that hurts the most. It is Gifts Storm. Yes, this was the only deck I played in Modern from 2017 to summer of 2022 when I started playing Twiddle Storm, which is now my go-to Modern deck. I've been playing it for around 5 months. I've been enjoying the deck a lot. I think it's just strictly better <laughs> Gift Storm because it's just as fast, if not faster, and it doesn't require a creature. Sure, it's a bit more reliant on the graveyard at times, but now that I play Ad Nauseam in the list along with Profane Tutor, it just rolls through graveyard hate without a problem but this deck has a few issues well 
First of all, the goal is to get a parole chief of compliance or a goblin electromancer in a play, which are cost reducers, for instance, as sorceries. And then you would play rituals like Desperate Ritual, Mana Morphose, Priority Ritual, to get a lot of mana. You would play Gifts and Given, 4 mana instant, search your library for 4 cards with different names and reveal them. Target opponent chooses 2 of those cards, put the chosen cards into your graveyard and the rest into your hand and shuffle. You say, oh, that's pretty bad, the opponent gets to choose 2 cards. But the classic pile would be Past and Flames, Mana Morphose, Priority Ritual, and Desperate Ritual. So no matter what the opponent gave you, you will be able to flash everything back with Pass and Flames because if they put the Pith in the graveyard, you can just flash it back with all the mana uh, you got from the cards the opponent gave you. And if they give you the Pass and Flames, then you can just cast it to cast your rituals from the graveyard. So you would do that, and then you would flash back the Gifts and Given to get another Pass and Flames and a Grape Shot, and then get to 20 Storm Count, flash back the Grape Shot, or just cast it if the opponent put it into your hand. That was essentially how this deck works. but couple issues with this deck. First, well, the only issue I would say, it's weak to everything. <laughs> it's weak to removal, it's weak to graveyard hate, it's weak to spell hate, it's weak to counter spells, it's weak to so much stuff. It's just not really a rational decision to play this deck anymore. Even though if I had to pick one deck that if I had to play for the rest of my life would probably be Gift Storm over even Twiddle Storm. If Gift Storm becomes good again, I will 100% pick this deck back up. I probably won't quit Twiddle Storm altogether because I just love that deck too. But I think Storm is just, it has a special place in my heart. I've played this deck for five years, goddammit. <laughs> so of course, of course this deck is a lot of fun to me. And people still refer to me as the Gift Storm guy, even though I haven't played the deck in months. But I plan on giving it a second shot in the future. Don't know what that's going to be, but I will definitely. But that's probably not going to be now or in the near future because it seems as though this deck is totally dead. But here are a few new additions. There are th three copies of Strike It Rich. One red sorcery, make a treasure token. Flashback to generic one red. Uh, Wish from AFR was good because it could give you access to Pass and Flames. Empty the Warrens or a uh, grape shot out of the sideboard uh, but the thing that's really shocking about this deck is ever since i bought the deck in 2017 almost nothing has changed the only thing that's really changed is now you play wish you have uh, opt which <laughs> sounds like such a small upgrade back then we used to play sleight of hand uh, or tom scour and other than that there's literally nothing so I think the modern format just kept progressing. Combo decks just got better. Decks like Creativity, Living End, Rhinos, the I mean the Titan, they constantly kept getting new upgrades, whereas Storm just got absolutely nothing. And I can't blame I can't I can't be mad because why would Wizards want Storm to be a good deck? It's like the deck everybody hates playing against. So I don't blame them at all for not printing good rituals or broken cantrips. For a deck like this or cost reducers that are uh let's say if they printed a two mana instant that said instance of sorceries you cast until the end of this turn cost one less to cast draw a card that would be completely broken in a deck like this because it would be like having a cost reducer that doesn't make you weak to removal but i just don't think they they want storm to be a good deck and i can't be mad at that because it's it's kind of common knowledge that Storm is not fun to play against, but I just love that deck, and I hope you can make a comeback in the future. Wizards, please unban Ride of Flame and Seething Song. <laughs> I want those cards in Modern. But that's it for five Modern decks that disappeared in the format. Let me know if I missed some, or some that fell off so hard that uh, you, I just might have forgotten about them. Those are some decks that I haven't seen in years most of the time, and... Yeah, they just completely disappeared. So let me know in the comments and I will talk to you guys later.